Welcome to Rethink, the podcast that empowers you to challenge your existing beliefs and embrace new, more productive ways of thinking. Here at Rethink, we believe that the key to self-fulfillment lies in shattering old thought patterns and adopting new mindsets that support personal growth and empowerment. With expert guests and thought leaders from a wide range of fields, we explore strategies and insights that can help you achieve success and fulfillment in all areas of your life. From relationships to career, business ownership, and health, you are the source of your own success. We're just here to help you tap into your true potential and create a brighter future. So join us on the journey of personal growth and empowerment, and let's rethink what's possible for our lives. Hey guys, welcome into the podcast. You have reached re. Think and my name is Kelly. I'm your host. I'm always glad to welcome you in. Uh, we've got how many more days? Four days. <clears throat> Four days until we begin to welcome in a new year. Today is December 27th. And uh, happy to have you guys aboard. Uh, we are uh, encapsulating, summarizing, however you want to say it, uh, our podcast season three here at the end of 2023. And today we are talking about uh, rethinking our uh, personal growth, personal growth and development, navigating the journey of self-improvement. And in many ways, it is the single most important theme of this podcast, self-improvement. I would think in some way, shape, form or fashion, if you do listen to this podcast, uh, this is one of the things that uh, you are interested in. This is one of the things you're interested in. If you continue to listen to the podcast, I would think that you think that we're providing relatively good information and um, ways to improve. Uh, So thank you. Thank you for listening. If this is your first time, welcome aboard. Uh, Season three, you've got, uh, this is show 42, I believe, 42. So you got 41 other podcasts to listen to in season three. And then you got seasons one and two to go and binge. Uh, our core listeners, our old timers, thank you guys so much for continuing to support the podcast. I say it um, each time we record, but it is absolutely true. You are the reason why we continue to be successful and continue to grow. I'll ask you all to do two things. Number one, please, if you haven't done so, go ahead and give us a kind review four or five star review, five stars, wherever it's offered. Sometimes they're only four stars, but highest number of stars you can give us. We'd appreciate it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Along with a, a really kind of review. That helps us to be found uh, when people are searching for podcasts to listen to in our genre. The next thing is to subscribe and to uh, share. Uh, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Subscribing is important because you can turn on notifications. And whenever we put out a new podcast, Even if you're not on your podcast app or your device, it'll send you a notification and it'll say, hey, here's a new podcast from Rethink and it will jar your memory in case you've forgotten. And sharing is important because this is how we grow. Uh, Someone certainly that you know could use uh, some uh, of our content as it relates to personal self-development. Uh, understanding work-life balance, health and wellness, relationships, productivity, and goals, which happen to be what we've talked about the last few days. Uh, Share the link uh, with your friends, family members, loved ones, or associates. And for that, we would be most appreciative. As we get going today, I hope you guys are doing well. It's uh, weather's pretty good here. I understand the next few days is going to change. And by change, I mean get cold. So I'm going to go out and enjoy today because the next few days, uh, it's going to be cold. I don't mind the cold, but uh, we'll see. Today, I think it feels like, I took my dogs out, it feels like it's probably in the high 50s, early, uh, or I'm sorry, the um, mid or low 60s, something like that. I'm not 100% sure, but it feels pretty good outside. We've had rain from Christmas. Uh, really Christmas Eve all the way up until yesterday that's been raining. So sun's out today. Good day. Good day. Good day. You ready? Well, let's go. Rethink personal growth. 
navigating the journey of self-improvement. Now, if we look back over the year, like I said before, if nothing else, this is thematic of what we stand for here on the podcast. Whether it doesn't really matter what the topic is, it really is geared and delivered in a way that would enhance your personal development and your personal growth. That's the goal of the podcast, because we're committed to evolving, to learning and to becoming, yep, the best versions of ourselves. We want to maximize our productivity, increase our ability to learn and to grow always, 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 always. So let's talk today about some daily practices uh, that we can embody for personal growth. For personal growth. And yes, uh, these are, as we normally do, non-traditional approaches uh, to personal growth. And the first is mindful morning routines, mindful morning routines. And since we're beginning or almost at the beginning of a new year, uh, maybe this is a good time for those of us who were really engaged and committed to our morning routines, you know, a large part of 2023, but somehow we fell off, really engaged our evening routines. Somehow we fell off. Now's the time to recommit ourselves. We don't have to wait to January 1. We can do it today. Recommit yourself to uh, going back to your morning routine, enhancing your morning routine, or if you didn't have one at all, to creating a morning routine, a mindful morning routine. How does it look? Well, start your day with mindfulness. Dedicate a few minutes each day to deep breathing, gratitude journaling, or and or positive affirmations. Try to do all of them. But if you're just starting off, uh, start off with your deep breathing, incorporate journaling, and then get into your positive affirmations. Of course, throughout the year, we talked about mirror work, and vision boards, there's a multitude of things that we talked about that could really enhance your personal growth around your morning routine. Setting a positive tone in the morning is so important. You're more likely to carry that positivity throughout the day. Don't wait for something to happen uh, that will set the tone for your day. Okay, a phone call, an email, or a spouse, or, or someone saying something to you. You determine at the beginning of your day what type of day you're going to have and stick to that. Stick to that. Your mentality should be whatever happens throughout this day, it's going to be a good day. And everything is just everyone is just playing their parts in me having a great day. Here's an example. Spend five minutes each morning practicing deep breathing. Inhale deeply for a count of four. This is called box breathing for our guys who uh, uh, have listened to the meditation uh, episodes that we did this year. Inhale deeply for four, uh, hold it for four, exhale for four, and then hold it for another four, and you just continue to do this practice. This is a very simple practice to center yourself, center your mind, and to reduce your stress. Now, you're just waking up. Hopefully, you didn't wake up stressful, uh, but you can use this practice throughout the day. You can use it before you go and public speak if you have trepidation around speaking. You can use it any time you want to use it. When you feel anxiety building and stress building, use your block breathing techniques. All right. So number two is lifelong learning. Again, we're talking about practices for personal growth. Commit yourself to learning something new every day. This should be all of our goals. I just was thinking about something the other day, even before I prepared this podcast. I have been listening to, and this is going to sound kind of odd because I said it to my wife and she was like, okay. And I even said it to my girls and they understood it better, but they were like, okay. I have always, um, what's the best way to say this? I have always been a semi-fluent Spanish speaker. Okay. Semi-fluent, meaning I studied in school. Studio in La Escuela por dos años. I studied in school for two years when I was in high school. And I dated a girl who uh, only spoke Spanish for, I don't know, several months when I was a senior. I lived in a part of Atlanta that allowed me the opportunity to interact with Spanish speaking people on a regular basis when I was in college. And that's pretty much it. And fast forward, you know, several years, I think me and my wife, about seven years ago, we went to Puerto Rico and 
seven and a half years ago, we both took a class together to help us to sort of, you know, revitalize our Spanish speaking because we both speak Spanish semi-fluently. And but it's, it's since then, I've not really I've not really done it. So it's like I don't have a, 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 a friend or someone in my circle who's a Spanish speaker that would force me to speak Spanish on a regular basis so that I can get from being semi-fluent to being completely fluent in, in some level of uh, expertise. So what have I done? Yes, I went to YouTube uh, University, but in a little bit more unconventional way. Here's what I do. I, I, I don't ask how this came up in my, I think it came up because I watch, um, I'm sort of fascinated. I'm, I'm getting off topic, but it's going to make sense. Hang in there. I'm fascinated by people who travel and the digital do, uh, nomads. We're going to talk about this in 2024. If the case, there's someone in the audience that's like me, fascinated by tiny houses and tiny home living and being a minimalist, but also being a digital nomad. I, I, I see these people and I'm like, oh man, that's, that's where I'm headed. So I think this sort of came up in my recommendation cues from YouTube because I watch people who travel for a living. They go to all different kinds of countries. But one particular guy, he goes to a lot of Spanish speaking countries. So sometimes there are videos that come up and they're recommended that I've never really, I don't know who the creator is, but sometimes I'll click on them. And this just so happens, I clicked on this video and then this guy's got tons of videos and everybody's sort of in the same little circle because they live on an island, but they're all Spanish speakers. And I just became intrigued and in watching them go about their day. They record a video almost every day or every other day. And what I did is I turned on the subtitles. And I force myself to, one, try and determine what they're doing by listening, watching, and reading. I watch what they do. I listen, but I read the subtitles. And me and Google Translate trying to figure out what's going on in the scene. Now, I've been doing this for about two weeks. And I don't know if it's wishful thinking is actually happening, but I feel like I'm becoming again, uh, familiar with the language because I'm hearing it on a more regular basis. I said all that to say this, commit yourself to learning something new every day. What's keeping you from learning another language? It could be your motivation to go to Paris this year, learning French. Okay. Learning French could be your way of motivating you and your partner, you and your spouse to get out and go overseas or go to, maybe you're from Europe already, and, but just go to Paris and and be able to, you know, what one of my goals was when I went to Paris, I wanted to order at least something in French. Now, I'm sure I sounded like a foreigner to this waiter because he laughed, but he knew what I was <laughs> trying to say. But I did that. That was something that I've always wanted to do. We ate at this quaint little um, cafe. It was within walking distance from the Eiffel Tower. You could kind of see it from where we were sitting in a restaurant. And I did something that I've always wanted to do, which now that I recount, it sounds pretty great. I ordered a dinner in French in Paris. Okay. I've actually done that. You can do that as well. And maybe Paris is not your spot. Maybe you want to go to Guatemala. Maybe you want to go to Caracas. I don't know. But the point is, find something that you're passionate about, something that you want to learn and learn something new every day. Now, you can take this that way, a more studious approach, or you can take a more broad approach to this topic. Learn something new every day could mean today I'm going to learn how to sew, tomorrow I'm going to learn how to change the oil on my car, the next day I'm going to take a different way to work. The point is personal growth. Do things differently. Increase your neurons. Increase the amount of, um, uh, what are they called, uh, synapses within your brain. Every time you do something different or do something old in a different way, you create new connectivities within your brain. The synapses and the more you have, the, the, the better, okay, the better. And you can Google this uh, just to get a little bit more scientific uh, um, definition. Uh, but that is true. 
So do something new every day, whether it's language like what I'm doing <laughs> through YouTube. Uh, it could be reading a chapter from a non-fictional book every day. Your deal could be, I'm going to read a book every month this year. So by the time 2024 is gone, I'm going to have 12 new books underneath my intellectual belt. You could be watching educational videos. I'm telling you, YouTube is like a gold mine. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff out there that's a little, you know, whatever, but there's a lot of good information out there too. What's keeping you from taking a class on Udemy? I knew I shouldn't have started with this because I love this. I'm going to keep talking about it, but we've been talking about uh, taking classes, Udemy, uh, uh, Khan Academy, uh, online from local or, or international or national universities. It doesn't matter. Figure out what it is that you want to do. Continuous learning fuels personal growth. Continuous learning fuels personal growth. You only know what you know. If you seek out information and you put yourself within a group of people, your inspiration can come from them and vice versa, and you all can take a good idea and make it great. Here's an example of a daily practice. Why don't you dedicate 30 minutes each day, 30 minutes each evening, 30 minutes each morning, it doesn't really matter, to reading or watching educational content. Over time, you're going to accumulate valuable knowledge and skills. So this is my goal. Right. Um, I have a strong interest in going to Costa Rica. I have a very strong interest in going to Panama when they finish fighting. I have a very strong interest in going back to Puerto Rico. I have I want to be in my in, in the area of my Hispanic brothers and sisters. And I want to speak more fluently and I want to feel more confident about it. So what am I doing? I'm trying to prepare myself. I'm not going next week, but I need to slowly accumulate this information. And so commit yourself to learning something new every day. And don't just let that be this week, this month, this year. This should be a lifelong commitment. Again, we're talking about personal growth. Let's move on. Goal setting and reflection. Perfect time to discuss this because maybe you didn't hit all your goals in 2023 or maybe you did. Either way, it's time to set new goals. Reflect on 2023. What worked well? What didn't? Set clear actionable goals for your personal growth journey. What does that look like? Where do you want to be at the end of 2024? Where do you want to be in three years and five years? You need to regularly review and adjust your goals accordingly. Reflect on your progress. Reflect and celebrate your achievements. It's probably the most important thing you can do. Go back over 2023, you and your spouse, you and your children, you and your family, and celebrate what you guys accomplished in 2023. I just gave myself an idea. I'm going to do that. Sit down around the table and talk about all the places you went, all the things you accomplished, all of the goals you achieved, and help each other celebrate the milestones that 2023 brought and now are gone. Complete it successfully. Okay. Here's an example. Here's what you can do as a daily practice. Write down achievable goals for the month, break them into weekly milestones, and assess your progress each Sunday. Sunday's your check in time. Monday's your start time. Sunday's your check in time. How good did I do this week? What do I need to do next week? All this should be moving towards your goal. The next thing uh, is mindfulness meditation. This is different than a mindful morning routine, which could include your meditation. I want to be clear. Your mindful morning routine could include your mindfulness meditation. Excuse me, mine does. So incorporate mindfulness meditation into your daily routine. Simply 10 minutes of meditation each day or 15 could make a big difference and it could enhance your self-awareness. I'm so excited I can't even pronounce the word. Your self-awareness, reduce stress, and improve focus. Now, you want to move from 10 to 15, 15 to 30, and as much as you can do, but try to get to that 30-minute mark. Try your best to commit to this every day, every day for 30 days, and after that, I won't have to tell you to do it because you will want to do it. You will feel naked without it. It's like walking out the house without your cell phone. You want to put up this barrier of protection for your mind, for your energy every day, and you will not take no for an answer. Here's a daily practice. Use a meditation app if you like. There's one I can refer you to, which is called Balance. I've used it for the last two years, Balance. If you need help and you like guided meditation, Balance is one I refer to. You can use guided meditations on YouTube also to get started. Find yourself a quiet space, sit comfortably, 
and let go of your distractions. I'll tell you two things. Number one, when you first start, it won't be easy. Just keep going. Number two, it is worth it. It is absolutely worth it. That's mindfulness meditation. The last thing is healthy lifestyle choices. All right. In 2024, how are you going to prioritize your health versus what you did in 2023? Even if you did a fantastic job in 2023, what else can you cut out of your diet? What different types of exercises can you challenge your body, your vessel with? How can you take your practices and share them with your family, your extended family, your community, your local groups? Healthy lifestyle choices in 2024. Prioritize your physical health through regular exercise and, yes, a balanced diet. Your physical well being is as important as your spiritual and mental well being. It all must go together in this holistic approach to mental health and wellness. Your physical well being greatly impacts your mental and emotional growth. Here's a daily practice. Dedicate at least 30 minutes a day to some sort of physical activity, some sort of physical activity. The best case scenario, and I take this from NFL MVP Cam Newton, he says you should sweat at least once a day. Sweat at least once a day. Get your, in other words, get your heart rate up to the point where you break a sweat at least once a day. And I subscribe to that. Although I don't necessarily sweat every day. You know I do yoga. And it's strenuous, and it is difficult in many different cases, but I don't break a sweat like if I was running or if I was doing cardio. Whatever your thing is, do it for 30 minutes. You need the physical activity every day. Get your heart rate up. It could be a brisk walk. Walking actually, besides swimming, walking actually is one of the best exercises you can do to incorporate all the muscles in your body. Okay? Now, as long as you're not out there talking on the phone while you're walking, You're literally walking. You're not just like hanging out. You're walking. Your heart rates up. Your arms are swinging. You know, your legs are going. That kind of walking. Not you got one, you get the phone in one hand and then whatever else, uh, you know, soft drink in the other. Brisk walk. Uh, Yoga and or a home workout routine. Those are ways that you can enhance your um, personal growth using a healthy lifestyle choice in 2024. Now, the best results come through consistency. I've given you five different mechanisms through which you can practice or or derive daily practices for personal growth. But if you're not going to do them, it's not going to work. And if you're not going to do them consistently, also, you're not going to get the best benefit. The key to personal growth is consistency. Consistency. Small daily practices can lead to significant transformations over time. Imagine dedicating just 30 minutes a day to your personal growth. This amounts to over 180 hours in a year. Again, imagine dedicating just 30 minutes in a day to your personal growth. This amounts to over 180 hours in just one year. This is equivalent to more than seven full days of continuous self-improvement. Now, when you look at it like that, you know that that can make a significant change, significant impact to who it is that you want to become, whether it's weight loss, whether it's developing your soft skill sets, which we talked about a few days ago, whether it is incorporating a more positive self-concept, which if you check in the show notes, we have a a download you can get for, um, for free that talks about reconstructing who you are based on who you want to be, not who society wants you to be. Uh, This is a way for you to develop you the way that you want to be. I mean, seven full consecutive days. That's a lot of time. The next thing is real life transformation. Here's a story. Throughout the year, we've had the privilege of sharing inspiring stories. You've heard them at the beginning of many different podcasts uh, where we've embraced practices and witnessed incredible transformation of people that we've talked about. So from individuals who discovered their passion through lifelong learning to those who overcame personal challenges through mindfulness and resilience, their journeys serve as testaments to power, to the power of personal growth and to your power, to your personal power. Because every time I hear a testament, every time I hear someone say that they did something or accomplished something, particularly when it's something that I want to accomplish, 
it gives me the fortitude, the energy, the um, the inspiration. Yeah, there it is. The inspiration to continue to move forward in my own personal journey. You heard me say before, if you're trying to lose weight, the best person to get to mentor for you to be their protege is someone who's already lost the weight. Okay, it's going to inspire you. And that's what we try to do through the stories that we give you at the beginning of the episodes. When you come in, it can be done. So what I've been doing, guys, in these summaries is giving you some references as relates to podcasts from this season that you can go and listen to that will, you know, kind of drive home these themes that we're talking about today. It just happens to be personal growth. And also I've given you three books. If you want to go out and read them, fine. I'm getting no. Um, you know, these are not uh, uh, affiliate types of uh, deals where I'm, I'm saying, hey, go buy this and, and, and we'll profit. This is just recommendations. Uh, so it's up to you if you want to go buy them or not. But I wanted to offer them to you. And two of the books that I'm going to offer you today, I've actually read. So I'm going to personally say to go get those. But what's the podcast that I'm going to refer you to? Well, it's only one today. It looks like only one, but it's a series. So when you listen to this one, it's going to lead you to four others. This is called The Power of Your Self-Concept, Reconstructed Mindsets. I alluded to it a little earlier. This was done this year's episode 28. It was uh, recorded on November the 9th. Now, within the show notes of this particular episode, you can download a free ebook. It is 30 Days to Reconstructing Your Self-Concept. That is building yourself up into the individual that you want to be based on what you're passionate about and what your values are. Not your communities, not your moms, not your pastors, yours, okay? That is a series. So if you start there, it'll tell you uh, the next ones to go to. Now, in terms of books, I'm going to offer you uh, three books today, two of which I've written. The first book is by James Clear, James Clear, C-L-E-A-R. The name of the book is Atomic Habits. This is the second time I referred you to this book. Uh, through this summation, through this year in summation, Atomic Habits. It's an easy and proven way to build good habits and to break bad ones. Why is it being recommended? Well, Clear's book is a treasure trove of insights into habit formation and personal growth. He really does, guys. He really talks about micro habits, how to form good habits, how to get rid of old or bad habits. He breaks down the science of habits and he provides actionable. That's the key actionable strategies for making positive changes in your life. Many times we want to do things and we don't know how. We don't know how. We want to do things. We want to lose weight. We want to be stronger. We want to to feel better, but we don't know how. We're stuck in these old mindsets and patterns. You got to get out of those. And sometimes reading and being around groups of people doing the things that you want to do can help jar a thing within you loose so that you can think differently. The next book is by Angela Duckworth. Duckworth, just the way it sounds. The name of the book is Grit, The Power of Passion and uh, Perseverance. Grit. Why is it being recommended? Well, Duckworth's research and writings explore the concept of grit, G-R-I-T, which is the determination and the resilience needed to achieve long-term goals. She urges that grit, I'm sorry, she argues that grit is often more important than talent itself. This book will inspire your listeners to rethink. You listeners, you guys can rethink your approach to challenges and understanding uh, the role of perseverance in your personal growth. I think it goes without saying that every time you do something, it's not going to work out the way you want it to work out. And each time you try a thing, it's just not going to work out the first time. Okay, if you were perfect, then, hey, you wouldn't be listening to this podcast. All of us have areas uh, that we have failed in, which is fine. All of us have areas that we need to be improved, which, of course, is part of life. Knowing that and identifying those areas and actually working on them separates you from the rest. So, again, the name of the book is Grit, The Power of Passion and Perseverance. The last book is by Eckhart Tolle. T-O-L-L-E, and it is The Power of Now. I read this. It is powerful. It is absolutely great. The Power of Now is a guide to spiritual enlightenment. 
Why am I recommending this? Well, uh, Eckhart's book delves into the realm of mindfulness and living in the present moment. And I could talk about that for a whole nother podcast, but I'm going to leave it alone. It offers a profound perspective on the nature of the self and, as a result, personal growth. By embracing the power of now, individuals can rethink their approach to life, to stress, to happiness, and ultimately, this can lead you to a personal transformation. Now, when you think about why you listen to this podcast, why you go to college, why you are trying to, you know, why you go to church, why you have a religion, whatever your practices are, I can guarantee you for one reason. You are looking for some level of personal transformation, improvement, and growth, which is the name of this podcast. We've given you quite a bit today. I'm going to tell you a request or suggest. Go back and listen to the podcast again. And please uh, take a look at the books I've offered. But the podcast that I referred you to, The Power of Your Self-Concept, is a very powerful series. And it can really help you if you're really serious about personal growth. It can really give you day-to-day uh, ideas about what you can do to begin to see change in your life. Again, I told you guys, uh, I, I believe that part of my well, let me say that better. I know that my passion is helping people. That I know. This podcast came as a result of that desire. Information like what I've just given you is giving my time, giving my uh, intellect uh, to you for free, saying, just try this. Maybe this will help. I don't know where you are. I don't know who you are. But I know people are more alike than different. And these concepts are proven. This is scientific. It's not all willy-nilly. You literally, though, have to apply it. Knowledge does not and will not apply itself. So my hope is that you will listen to the podcast again and that you will engage, employ these uh, techniques within your life. And then over time, you'll begin to see the change that you want to see. I will simply say to you, my friends, namaste. I appreciate you listening to this podcast. I am loving this daily content. I'm feeling better in this seat every time I sit down. Thank you so much. What are we talking about tomorrow? Because tomorrow uh, we're getting closer to day uh, 31. So tomorrow is December 28th. We're going to be talking about rethink technology, technology uses, discussing the impact of technology on our daily life and different ways for us to maintain a healthy digital balance. Come back tomorrow. That's what we'll be talking about. Thank you, guys. Talk to you soon. That's all for today's episode of Rethink. We hope that you've enjoyed this exploration of new ideas and perspectives and found valuable insights and strategies that you can apply to your life. Remember, you are the source of your own success and fulfillment. And by embracing new ways of thinking, you can unlock your true potential and, yes, create the life that you truly desire. Now, if you've enjoyed this episode, we encourage you to support the podcast by sharing it with your friends, your family members, your loved ones and associates, and even your followers on social media. Also, leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. Lastly, don't forget to check out our show notes for free downloads and empowering ebooks that can help you on your journey of personal growth and empowerment. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. We look forward to exploring more ideas and insights with you in the next episode of Rethink.